I want to preach on today is, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. And uh, the passage that expresses everything is First Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 18. If you don't know it, you need to memorize it. It's very short. Say, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in everything. Amen? Um. A few, a few years ago, we had a ministry called African Outreach. And in African Outreach, we learned a song, uh, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, all you his people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let us praise, let us clap, let us celebrate and dance. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And, and there are many passages in the Bible when we talk about giving thanks to God. There are many passages in the Bible that I could use as a text. I don't want to use one, even though I've already read uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse uh, 18 to you. But I, I want us to think it this way. The whole Bible is about giving thanks to God. The whole Bible is about giving thanks to God. We're going to look at some 100, some 106, 107, some 118, some 136, some 137. We're going to give praise to God. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 3. We're going to put it all together and praise God. Praise and thank God. You know, giving thanks to God should be one of the love lofty aims of every Christian. God is good. All the time. How do you know that you are an elite Christian? Is it because you come to church every Sunday? Is it because you go to Sunday school, Bible study, you pay your tithes? You're always there. No, you know that you are an elite Christian when you learn to praise and thank God. When you learn to praise and thank God. And I believe that churches need to teach our people how to thank and praise God. It's not natural. It's not natural. Remember that one of the things that you teach your children is how to say thank you. Amen? It doesn't matter. You you get a cup. You put water in it. You give it to them. They take it and they walk away. And you say, hey, say thank you. Why are you doing that? Why don't you let them go? All you do is give them a cup of water. But you don't want that child to represent you somewhere else where somebody is going to say, where did you come from? Who brought you up? Who taught you? Who raised you? So you want them to understand that when somebody does something for you and it's to your benefit, you say, thank you. Amen? Let me look around here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is good. All the time. He is good. Amen. We have a visitor, so we're going to hand it to the visitor. You're welcome. Did, Did you all hear that? Thank you. And it feels so good when somebody says thank you to you. And when he said thank you right there, I wanted to do some more. 
Wow. I'm, I'm going to do some more. I just feel like giving you something. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do something for you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. What can I do for Steve here? He did all that barbecuing. Like, thank you. Thank you for doing all the barbecue. Let me, let me stop right there. Thank you. Thank you. You know, thank you is an expression. An expression that says, I appreciate you. And sometimes we need to take time to teach Christians how to say thank you to God. It's not natural. We have to learn how to do it. Uh, there is a Yoruba proverb that says, Anybody do well, Ria, no? You're real, Mirongba. Uh, to, to translate it, it means anyone that says thank you for yesterday's favor is bound to get another one. But there is also an opposite Yoruba proverb that says, Eniti ashe lore tiko dupe, odabi olosha tokoni lerulo. That means that the somebody that we did a favor to and we gave something to that did not say thank you. It's like a robber, a thief. That goes away with your property. When God has done something for you. And you don't say thank you. You are like a thief. So let's look real quickly. I'm going to define the word thanks. And then we'll take off into the message. What, let, let's look at the word thanks. T-H-A-N-K-S. What do they stand for? This is Emmanuel's version. The first T stands for thoughtful words. That has to do with the head. You thinking about what has been done. Thinking about what has been done does something to the human psyche. Thinking about it and looking at it and evaluating it and uh, analyzing it. That is the function of the mind. You have to think about it. Think very deeply about it. And then the H lead to the other part because the head must meet the heart. So the H stands for heartful and the expression of the heart. Heart expression. In other words, your head understands it. But many times we deal just with the head. When it stays with the head, there is no true thanking. It has to go into the heart. And the heart expresses what the head understands. Because the heart is the seat of man. If you look in the Bible, you will see all through the Bible, the heart is considered the seat of the man, the center of God. Not only that, but you go from the head to the heart, then you understand what the A stands for. The A stands for attitude adjustment. What that means is, you have to get to a point in your life that you understand that you say thanks not only for the things that you rejoice about, When you become a Christian, you rearrange the way you think 
So that the things that you say thank you for are not just the things that you're happy about. You recognize that God is sovereign in your life. God is in control of your life. And whatever he permits to happen in your life, it's for your own good. It may not be good, but it is being worked out for the good. So you can be thankful for the things that will depress you. Because your attitude has been adjusted. You are now living in the life of Christ. And you are no longer your own. Amen? Uh, the N stands for necessary expression. Amen? It's necessary to express some things. Amen? Hey, you're welcome. You knew I was giving it to you, eh? I was going. I was going to say, just uh, examine it and give it back to me. No. <laughs> Amen. You're welcome. Now, what will it look like if, after I give it to them, they just said? Uh, there are a lot of us that come to God that way. We say, I am reserved. I, I don't say it out. I'm just thinking it. Thank you requires expression. The expression is necessary. God is not deaf. And God knows everything. But God wants you to express it. And in fact, the Greek word for praise and thanks actually comes from, it really interesting, the word for praise is the word amologeo, which means to say the same thing God has said. And the word for thanks comes from Christ and grace. The combination of the person of Christ and his grace that is lavished upon you, that is not based on what you deserve, not based on what you have done, not based on your status, not based on your race, not based on your class. It is just based purely on the goodness and mercy of God. That's all it is. You recognize that and you have to necessarily say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus told the parable about ten lepers. How many of you remember that? How many came back? Only one. Say thank you. Where's the rest? Did we heal ten? But only one came back. Grateful. Necessary. It's necessary when God has done something for you that you say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. It is important that you say. And then number, the next one is K. And the K stands for key to a lasting relationship. Amen. Those of you that are married, let's say your wife does your laundry. And the what? Oh, bless you. Okay. I was going to direct you to Sister Hairston. Yeah. 
let's say your wife did your laundry and every time she will clean 100 of your dirty clothes and socks and everything. And when you come home, you see 99 well ironed and pressed and put away. There was one that is not good and that's the one you always talk about. Put the others away. You talk them away. You you know you ah, have a clean underwear. How come you didn't iron this one? Uh-huh. Amen? Amen. How about cooking? Amen. You thank the Lord, but you didn't thank your wife. (laughs) And I don't want to be a male chauvinist pig because I realize that sometimes men do the cooking and the women do the eating. And sometimes the men do the eating and the women do the cooking. But I'm just saying, what, what if You don't even appreciate the things that are done. You don't say thank you, but you always find fault with the things that are not done. That relationship is not going to last. It's not going to last. Your relationship to God is going to be like a yo-yo relationship. If you are always wanting God to answer and to meet all of your every need. I asked the Lord for a Mercedes Benz. A two story house. A brown dog. Massage every week. And a really, really nice bank account. And guess what? I only got the nice brown dog. (laughs) I wonder why God is not going to deal with this. Deal with the brown dog. Amen. Did, did you pray for the brown dog? Say thank you God. For giving me the brown dog. And, and you. God wants to have relationship with you. God is fun. When you have time with God. You know God is fun. Say God. I thank you for the brown dog. Still waiting for the Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Lord. I'm still waiting for the two story house. But I thank you. For the brown dog. The brown dog you sent. Is keeping me company. Thank you, Jesus. The brown dog, especially in Nigeria, is keeping thieves away from my house. I thank you, God. But I'm still waiting. Say thank you for what you have. And the last one is S. S means say it and sing it. Don't just thank it. Say it, sing it, don't just think it. We have to learn to say it. Amen? How many people have I married here? I married you. Raise raise your hand. Okay, all right. Well, will you, will you, if, if you're in front of me and I'm reading and I say, will you take so and so, 
uh, to be your lovely wedded wife, to have and to hold. And you looking at me, and I'm saying, do you? <laughs> is it is it okay to just think it? You got to do what? You got to say. You got to say I do. <laughs> you got to say I do, and you got to say it like you mean it. Amen. That is, you know, I thank him because he gave me Johnny Mercies. I'm not ashamed to say it. Why, even while I was traveling in Nigeria, there were at least three planes that fell from the sky. But I thank God that the law of gravity held from San Francisco to Paris, from Paris to Cotonou. Uh, but not only that, but I thank God that he was thinking about me. When I wasn't even thinking about myself. I got to Paris. And the man that did not know me apart from Buddha. Said, uh, uh, Mr. Akonyo, do you have problem with business class? <laughs> I was, I was thinking how much it's going to cost me. <laughs> I said, uh, no, sir. He said, you've been bumped up. And I got in that plane. I want everybody to know I was business class. And when I sat down, hmm, I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Most of you didn't know the story behind it, but let me tell you, Joshua paid my uh, trip from here to Africa and back. And he asked me, he said, Dad, I want to put you on first class. I said, okay. That's not bad. I've been praying for that for a long time. <laughs> and uh, he said, just uh, find out how much it is and let uh, me know and uh, write the check. And when I got there, it was 24000 Wow, Lord. <laughs> and I got home. I said, Josh, it will be a sin to go first class. <laughs> he said it doesn't matter how much I said it matters to me Amen. yeah don't give it to your friends Amen. pay economy and give me the rest he said okay dad why don't you look uh, look at business class. I looked at business class too. It was too much money. I said, no, I'm not going to do the business class. He said, but you go, you're going to be traveling for 18 hours. I don't want you sitting cramped. I said, I said, let me ask them if they have one where they can put me by the door. <laughs> well, the, uh, the travel agent said there's one we call premium economy. He said, it's just like business class. You will have the ability to sit and, you know, and uh, it won't cost you an arm and a leg. I said, okay, uh, let, let's do that one. I said, Josh, the balance, you can put it in my pocket. Amen. And, uh, and he did. But you know what? I, I, felt, I felt so bad. Like, I'm going to a poor country. Why am I going to be sitting on the plane paying 24000 I'm going to get there just like the person in the economy. <laughs> I mean, the only difference is I will be at least 
20,000 poorer and Air France will be 20,000 richer. God said, you don't even know what I have in store for you. <laughs> God said, I know your name. I know what you need. I know every care. I know every hair that's not on your head. <laughs> and God sent me a Frenchman all the way in Paris. Didn't know me. He said, he said I bumped you. I said, well, God bumped me. <laughs> To business class. I, I, you know, I thank him because he provided for me in Africa. There was a time I used to go there and I would live in hotels all through. But now I can stay in my own house. It is the providence of the almighty God. Oh, I thank him. I thank him that even when I was in Lagos and I stayed in a hotel, he put me in a safe hotel with wonderful people. I wish I had time I could tell you about the dangers in hotels in Lagos. But I thank him because he knows my name. He knows my thoughts. He knows my every need. He knows my cares. He hears me when I call him. Do you know that God hears you when you call? We were traveling from Lagos to Cotonou. And then we had to go from Cotonou to Aklangpa. Many of you that have gone with me know places where I'm talking about. Now the road is so bad that you have to travel from Lagos to Cotonou. And then you have to go to Port Novo to go around. Yesterday, am I lying? You have to go and that is about five hours extra detour. Not only is that happening in the BAF car, we had myself, we had my brother Godwin, we had my uncle Phil Man, we have my big brother, and I mean big not because he's older, he's much younger, but he's big, Shola. <laughs> he's about three times my size. We have him in there, and we have Daya also in the car, and we're traveling we're going, we travel all the way. In fact, before we got to Atlanta, we noticed that our tank, our tank had been punctured. I was smelling gas. I said, I smell gas. Godwin said, he smells gas. So I said, I don't smell anything. <laughs> and we kept going, but while I was sitting, I was looking at the gauge. I noticed the gauge was running down. It wasn't moving. It was running. I said, there's something wrong. We need to stop. We stop stop at the exact place where God had people to help us. We stop at the exact place. And and if you know, uh, in, in, in the Republic of Benin, just about everybody sells gas. So we stopped at a place and immediately we came out, we looked at the gas tank and it was like somebody was peeing. And it was running out real fast. And I said, look at this. We still have some way to go. So what are we going to do? But the gas seller was right there. Probably really, really happy. (laughs) Because that Jeep will take 90 90 gallons to fill it up. It has a reserve. It fills in, then it goes into the reserve. And they sell them per, per liter about... 375 in the village and when you go into the into the cities about 600 per liter. Huh? Oh, praise the Lord. 
uh, the 600, she's telling me to translate it. The 600 is a little bit over a dollar because it's uh, 480 to 1. 480 francs to $1. Okay. So, but to make a long story a little bit longer, we, we, <laughs> we, uh, we got people out of the village. It was pitch dark. In fact, I was complaining on our way. I said, why do people go to sleep so early? It's dark, but you look at the time, it was still around 8 o'clock. I said, 8 o'clock in Petaluma? People still walking, still riding their bike around and everything. There was absolutely no nothing. But immediately we stopped, our car was surrounded. People came out from the village and everybody had their screwdriver or whatever it is. They, they're getting ready to help us and we got our car filled again. We got to the village. We did everything we needed to do. We were out of the village real quick. Uh, many of you know this. If I, if I stay in that village till the morning, I will go broke. So we did everything. And when some people were still asleep, we were already out of the village. Now, here comes the problem. We got to a place named Dangbo on our way back. And uh, the car went. And I asked my brother who was driving, I said, what's that? He said, the car won't work anymore. Now, now, I did not even know that this was the worst area in the whole of the Republic of Benin when it comes to crime and danger. Write it down. Dangbo. That was where we were. <laughs> the first thing I did was took my phone, I called Frida. I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. That was before I even knew anything about the place. I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's pitch dark. Our car won't work anymore. Can you call Shola or tell Shola I need Sammy's number? We weren't even praying. Okay? We didn't say, Lord, please save us. No. we. I wanted a mechanic to tell me what's going on with the Jeep. <laughs> uh, before I uh, got off the phone with Frida, she said, we're going to be praying. I called Shola. I said, you know, we need to talk to Sammy. I need Sammy to call me. But I waited, nobody called, so I called Sammy myself. I found out he was in my uh, phone. I called Sammy, Sammy won't pick up. At this time, it's really interesting. Here we are, the person that's right beside us, around us, uh, uh, on top of us, in our car, around our car. We didn't talk to him hey, yet. Hey, hey. We were waiting on men to get us out of this. So I'm there saying, Lord, please get us out of this trouble. Because I have called Sammy. Sammy will not pick up the phone. I've called everybody. <laughs> Lord, do your thing. Isn't it amazing how merciful God is? He didn't say, I'm not going to answer you. You, you just, you just thinking about me like a spare tire. You tried everybody else. You put them before me. Now you're calling on me. I ain't going to answer you. I 
I know that you guys were praying. I don't know how many people they called or whatever. You know, I, I knew that when my wife said we'll be praying, she'll be praying. And then this white raggedy car came right beside us from absolutely nowhere. Immediately that car came to our side. My brother Shola, as big as he is, went into the car. Took out his knife. And I saw him took out the knife. I thought he was going to do some repairs or something. Because he's an engineer by training. And he put the knife in his side. I knew then he wasn't using it on the car. And this guy came in and they were speaking French. With all the French I learned, I couldn't understand everything. I got a certificate from the University of Benin that says I know French. (laughs) It's on my wall. (laughs) In America. Where I speak English. (laughs) And I knew right away when this guy was talking to Shola that he was there to help us. There was the spirit of God that came upon me that said, this is my angel. And I just sent him to you. But my brother was getting ready to kill him. And Shola doesn't play. (laughs) Now let me tell you something about Shola. He is big. He is the most loud uh, person you've ever been around. But he is a chicken. (laughs) He is afraid of even the fly. But he knew the street. He knew the place. He went to school in the village of Aklangpa. He grew up in Aklangpa. He knew the area and he said this place is dangerous. Anybody coming by here, they don't mean any good. I said, no, this one means good. You need to listen to him. Before we could do anything, the guy looked in the car and everything and he took a knife out. Now we have two knives <laughs> in the dark. He took the knife out. He walked to his car. He opened the passenger's side and he cut his seat belt. He cut his seat belt. And I was watching him. He went to his car. He started tying the knot. I I was a boy scout and I knew right now, right away that he was tying a reef knot. And a reef knot means he won't let go. So he tied it and he walked. He walked to our car. He tied it and he said, I'm taking you to where you're going to get help. I wish I could tell you everything because time is gone. But I tell you, when God is doing something, when you call upon him and he comes on the scene, you can never give that glory to anybody. So it can be anybody but God that came in the middle of nowhere was willing to cut his own seat belt to get us to safety. And not only that, took us in his car. His car is not as big as ours. Took us in his car, all of us, to a hotel. And when I got to the hotel, I called back and said, we're at the hotel right now. We're okay. 
And I said these exact words. I said, God sent his angel. And he took us to the hotel. I want to tell you something. If you don't have anything to praise God for, come to me. I'll loan you mine. There are a lot of things we ought to praise God for. What should we praise God for? First, because he is God. He is king. He is creator. The Yoruba say, There is no God like you. There is no king like you. There is no chief like you. You are the king of all kings. You are the chief of all chiefs. You are the great I am. Oh, yes. I pity those who worship other gods. I pity those who bow their heads to Allah, but not to the Yahweh of the God of the very God. I have something to praise God for. Do you know God is not flaky? Oh, he's not flaky. When you deal with people, you understand. God is not flaky and God is not emotional. The Bible says, His love endures forever. Woo! His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. You think God is waiting on when you're going to be good? I have something to thank God for. I have got something to thank God for because he is a God of the covenant. He is a covenant honoring God. He was a covenant God to Abraham. He is a covenant God to you. To Abraham he was Berith. To you is the Atheke. God is in your life. God will hold you. His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three without reserve, utilizing all the resources of deity to save you out of your poverty. Thank God. His promises are true. He is a mighty God. Now, let me tell you something. If God has made a promise to you and you don't have it yet, keep waiting. It's on its way. It's on its way. I don't care what you're looking for. You're looking for a job. You've asked him. It's on his way. You're looking for a husband. He's on his way. You're looking for a wife. She's on her way. Because God does not lie. His promises are true. And he's going to bring it to pass. I like, I like the fact that he's a forgiving God too. Amen. He's a forgiving God. Oh, thank God that he is forgiven. Uh, some of you are not forgiven, but God is. If God marks iniquity, how many of us will stand? If God will say, if you are a sinner, I'm not going to meet with you, we won't have anybody in here. Amen. Even some of you that look holy right now. Amen. Whatever happened to the 49ers? I'm just taking a short commercial break. Uh, Charmaine, whatever happened to number seven? (laughs) You better pray for him. All right, well, the break is over. (laughs) If you're looking for something to praise God for, thank God and praise Him for giving you the Bible. Thank Him for giving you the Bible. His inspired word. The Bible sounds like a rock. Woo! There's absolutely nothing the world can do to destroy the Bible. They tried to destroy it in Rome. They couldn't do it. Tried to destroy it. Nebuchadnezzar tried to destroy it. Couldn't do it. All the kings tried to destroy it. They couldn't do it. The Bible stands like a rock. Undoubted me the raging storms of time. 
His pages burn with truth eternal. And it glows with the light sublime. The Bible stands every test we give it. Because its author is divine. By faith alone I expect to leave it and to prove it and make it mine. The Bible stands though the hills may tumble. It will stand when the earth has crumbled. I will plant my feet on its firm foundation. For the Bible stands. Amen. They can't say that about the Quran. Amen. Amen. Yeah, go tell the reporters I said so. They, they can't they can say that about the Quran. You say that about the word of God. The word of God is true. The Bible is true. The promises is true. And God will make it come to pass. Hallelujah. Ah, thank God he gave us salvation too. I thank him. Hey, don't you thank him for salvation? Isaiah said, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have gone our own different way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I thank God that I don't come to God's kingdom because of how good I am. Amen. If it were based on something good, I won't get there. And you won't get there either. It's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of the almighty God. I tell you, that is why I can truly say, Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, Jesus is mine. And that is why I can also say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. You came from heaven to earth to show us the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Hallelujah. You can't say that about Mohammed. Amen. Mohammed is dead and buried in Mecca. If you call him today, he won't, re- he won't answer you. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. The Bible said they buried him. They thought they had him. They buried him. They were all talking all around Jerusalem. Said the troublemaker is gone. Oh yeah, the miracle worker, he's gone. He's gone. Friday, they didn't hear anything about him. Saturday, they didn't hear any more about him. Even the disciples couldn't come out because they were afraid. Amen. Like us. They gone into hiding. And they thought they got it made. They had it. They didn't understand that 10,000 years ago, it was prophesied that he was going to stay in the belly for three days. Uh, They thought they had it done, but early on Sunday morning, early on Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Oh, thank God. Thank God, not only did he give us salvation, he gave us the church. He gave us the body of Christ so that we might be the true church of the living God. We are the people of God. We are related by the blood of Jesus. You know, I'm closer to many of you than to people in my own family. Because the blood of Jesus is thicker and stronger. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, he he gave us the family too. Amen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He gave us the family. He created Adam and Eve. Amen. Today you get in our world, people want to change it around. You want to say, my partner. God 
God didn't create no partner. Created a wife or a husband. Amen. When you're thanking God for sex, thank Him for the right kind of sex. Amen. The family is a divine institution. Thank God for the family. Don't mess up God's program. Don't mess up what God has instituted. God didn't institute that women sleep with women. Or men sleep with men. He made it so that you can procreate. Women and women can procreate. You can live together for a thousand years. Nothing will come out of it. Amen. Absolutely nothing. Now, I have, I've only dealt with eight reasons why I thank God and praise God, but I have a hundred. I I don't think you have time. Uh, Some of you are kind of reserved there and say, I wonder what he means by that. Is he going to give us a hundred? Is he going to stop right there? Or is he going to keep going? Uh, or you know, what? You know, thank God. Thank God for election. Thank God for predestination. Thank God for miracles. Thank God for healings. Thank God for spiritual gifts. Thank God for a free country where you can worship God anytime. Thank God for democracy. Thank God for science. Thank God for counselors. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for lawyers. Yes. Thank God for lawyers. Recreation. Thank God for roads. I just came out of Nigeria and Bini. I thank God for roads. Oh, Lord. Thank God for roads. Thank God for deacons. Thank God for pastors. Thank God for Sunday school teachers. Thank God for my car. It's not a Rolls Royce. But it takes me from point A to point B. Thank God for it. Thank God. So, let me say one thing. Just don't think about it. Say it. Say it in worship. Say it in your home. Say it among your friends. Don't be ashamed to thank God wherever you are. Just thank God because he says it's good to give praise and thanks to God. The Bible said clap your hands. All ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with a voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. God is good. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank Him. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. Hallelujah.